happy that we have a real member of our own, uh, Dr. Sikak, uh, to speak. Sikak uh, is a very uh, active uh, member of the network, in particular, playing a very significant role in our next generation uh, network. Um, he is taking a postdoc fellowship position uh, at University of Montreal uh, with uh, Busha Nashri uh, is the uh, uh, mentors at the uh, School of Public Health, and uh, he has uh, received a PhD degree in stochastic modeling control strategies in epidemiology from University of Ibn Tufail uh, is Kanichua, Morocco, and uh, and uh, he is currently working on developing an integrative framework, explains impact of health interventions in different, uh, across different spectrums. So I'm very happy to have you here and uh, address is your time. Thank you very much. Uh, I will share my screen. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh... Everyone can see my screen? Yeah, yeah looks good. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much, Professor Zhang Hong, for the presentation. And today I will talk about the probability analysis for between host or epidemic uh, model for population dynamics. And I will talk also briefly about in-host uh, infectious disease models. Uh, they name it also as viral uh, dynamics, where we try at the end, uh, we are starting to uh, investigate a way to couple between those two different types of models with different uh, time scales. So for the compartmental epidemic models, usually we are trying to predict the, the wave for uh, an epidemic um, or the infectious size, also the duration for that wave. Uh, maybe some, there is some work that they are trying to predict the exact time of the, the peak uh, by calculating the integral for the infected uh, size. Uh, also, uh, there is some ways to predict uh, by estimating the uh, parameters for the base decomposition number and also the, the impact of intervention uh, included in uh, this type of compartmental epidemic uh, models. So we can, in a compartmental, uh, I will talk about SIR type model, Kermak McKendrick, are trying to include a quarantine uh, strategy, or we can call it, since we are including the exposed compartment into the in, uh, infected compartment, uh, instead of calling it isolated uh, strategy, so we will call it uh, as globally as quarantine strategy. Also, we can add uh, delayed terms into compartmental epidemic models that can model the temporary immunity also question the vaccine efficiency and we can uh, incorporate the uh, delay as uh, the duration for the incubation of the uh, infectious disease. In a term of uh, stochastic disasters uh, are modeled by uh, jumps and here uh, in work that I will present for the near stochastic optimal uh, control, we try to include uh, a levy uh, noise into uh, a compartmental epidemic model to see the impact of uh, disasters as uh, lately earthquakes and uh, some uh, events that can uh, give uh, a big jump into the path of uh, an epidemic model. Multiple function responses, or we can call them uh, in, uh, incident function for uh, the incidence, 
uh, which differs uh, depending on the density of the population, also the uh, psychology of the infected uh, population that can change the behavior uh, of a disease and also it's a way to uh, describe uh, instead of direct contact between uh, the searchable and affected, it will give realistic uh, trajectory for the uh, infected site. The vaccination strategy, uh, it can be modeled as a compartment, and also it can be uh, modeled as a parameter uh, in a compartmental model. Uh, environmental perturbation, here uh, we will include uh, a white noise to define those uh, variables or those aspects that we don't know, but it, they give the fluctuation into the path of uh, searchable, infected, or the recovered in uh, epidemic mode. Uh, a treatment strategy as uh, control uh, into uh, the model. For the within host dynamics, usually they are described as uh, uh, this by the, the nature of the cells, the healthy cells, the infected cells. cells. It can include uh, the, the, the immunity also and the size of the viruses. Random perturbation uh, by white noise or by levy noise that can uh, describe the changement in the path for the size of uh, the cells. The lytic or non-lytic mechanism defined by the virus infection, either it will be in uh, one cell and it will use to uh, to have copies by changing the dna or it will uh, include and wait into a cell uh, such that the cell will uh, have multiple uh, cells as a result and after that uh, it will show up the cellular immune response uh, against uh, infectious disease or the virus, the bacteria that infected the human body. And the drug therapy, uh, we previously did work on uh, a viral model by uh, uh, describing drug therapy as a, a, an optimal uh, control into that model with the immune response. So in uh, this work that I will present, so we tried to describe that bursty noise uh, into an epidemic model, because if we use the switching regime or the uh, colored noise into an epidemic model, that means we will change from an environment into another environment, we switch to another environment, but how can we describe it regarding the same parameters without switching to, from state to another. Uh, for the normal noise, it will fluctuate uh, around an equilibrium point. In that case, it will too, but it will have the same symmetry, uh, symmetry uh, for the, that uh, equilibrium point. That model that we uh, investigated, is uh, SIQR model for compartment. The first one is acceptable, uh, infected, quarantined, and uh, recovered. Uh, we included this type for uh, non pharmaceutical uh, interventions uh, into the model. And for the parameters here, we have the recruitment trait of the population as A, and the natural death rate, uh, mu, a beta is the transmission rate, alpha one and alpha two is the death rate of infected and quarantine cases, P is the vaccine uh, vaccination rate, and uh, alpha is the rate of quarantined uh, infected individuals. And uh, 
gamma, uh, gamma one and two are the recovered infected and uh, quarantine uh, individual rates. So for the non-pharmaceutical intervention with the mitigation function uh, that tries to describe the time to establish a policy for spreading uh, a control, uh, the non-pharmaceutical interventions uh, described by the World Health Organization, uh, there is multiple levels for them. The first one for the any or moderate rate, it will include the hand the hygiene, the face mask, the travel advice, so the, the stage of uh, recommendation for people to uh, avoid each other. For the high one is the school closure and uh, the face mask for the public health and for the extra that were used because those for influenza but for the extra that were used for the COVID-19 it was working remotely and closure uh, for works and uh, uh, internal travel restriction uh, modifying it can go to uh, modifying humidity uh, that helps to uh, transport the, the virus and give them uh, a better uh, environment to live. And the contact tracing, uh, the border closure also. The basic reproduction here is R0 uh, equals to beta, the transmission rate, the glomerate rate, and F is related to, uh, to a general function uh, incidence that we will see after that. And here we can see that P is for the vaccination rate. Uh, if we have a bigger parameter for P, it will decrease the, the rate of the basic uh, reproduction number. That means uh, lesser people will uh, get infected by the virus. Here for the general, uh, general incidence uh, function F, it's non-negative and bounded, twicely continuous differentiable uh, and it's uh, F X on F uh, on X is multiply decreasing. Uh, we have derivative uh, of zero is bigger than zero, and also some conditions of on the derivative. This function can describe the bilinear incidence uh, I saturated incidence rate I uh, divided by one plus R I. A psychological effect it's I divided by one plus I. Uh, are uh, power two and the combination of the crowding and psychological effect for those two functions. Uh, normally, uh, I should put the reference for those uh, incidents, but uh, I can uh, send them if someone is interested in uh, seeing the statistical aspect of each uh, function. So, for the mathematical background, uh, I will give uh, a small uh, uh, presentation for the, uh, the term for the stability. So in general sense, the trivial solution of stochastic differential equation is said to be stochastically stable or stable in probability for every pair of uh, epsilon between zero and one. Uh, we have that the probability of uh, X, module of X, is uh, bigger than one minus epsilon. So otherwise we would say uh, it's stochastically unstable. For uh, our works, we use uh, usually we, usually the uh, the Apinov function. So if there exists a positive definite function V, such as uh, LV is less than zero. So we have uh, we fulfill the, the condition for the stability and we say that the trivial solution of uh, SDE is uh, stochastically stable. So in our model, uh, in order uh, to uh, include the perturbation, we perturbated the mu and uh, on uh, this form in each uh, compartment. So as the first uh, result, we have the existence and uniqueness of the global solution. So for any initial value 
of S, I, and Q. Here, we reduced uh, the last uh, equation because there is no reversing back or the type of SIRS uh, model that describes the loss of immunity uh, for the model. So uh, there is a unique solution, SIQ, uh, of a stochastic system, and the solution will remain in its domain with uh, probability one. Since we added uh, a noise in each uh, compartment, the problem here that we will we won't have the, that uh, invariant domain that contains the 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 paths for the the system. So we try to ensure firstly the boundness of the system that won't explode uh, in either way. And since we proved that it's positive, uh, we proved also that is uh, bounded. And to ensure the persistence uh, of the infectious disease in uh, that model, we used that lemma from uh, Kaczminski, uh, his book, Stochastic Stability of Differential Equations, to uh, ensure the uh, ergodicity, uh, ergo there is a unique ergodic station stationary distribution uh, in case of R, uh, R0 or Rs is uh, bigger one in the stochastic term. That means we ensure that there is an average ensemble and there is the, the time uh, average uh, of, of N. For the, firstly, for the extension of the disease, we defined uh, a stochastic uh, condition where uh, it's uh, denoted as beta A, uh, 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 capital A on mu1, mu2 plus the volatility. And here, here we can see that if we have the volati volatility equals to zero, so we have the same deterministic that and the same condition for the extinction in a deterministic system. Uh, moreover, we have this theorem where Rs0 is less than 1. And we can say that the limit of it uh, in 4t uh, to infinity is e equal to 0. Um, its integral is uh, bounded. And we have that condition also that if R0 is bigger than 1, even we have the persistence in the, the deterministic uh, path. If Rs0 is less than one, if there is a perturbation that ensure the, this condition, we will have extinction in the stochastic path, even there is a, a persistence in a, the uh, deterministic uh, path for the same system. So here we ensured also for the, the persistence in, in, uh, of the infectious disease in uh, the model, where we have the following term for Rs0. And if it's bigger than one, we can say that the system has unique stationary distribution E and it has a codec uh, property. So for the numerical simulation, for this model, we used the Canadian data from April, the 1st April 2021 to May uh, 31. And we have the following uh, values for the parameters. Uh, we deduced the, the parameters for the system, but we fitted the data such as uh, we have, we get a value from the data for the, the, the beta. And also we used a way to calculate the volatility for the searchable quarantine and recovered uh, population. So uh, we estimated the parameter beta using deterministic uh, part for the, the, the system. And we're trying to minimize the quadratic flows 
so we iterate at each time uh, uh, another interval, another path, and we are trying to calculate the distance between the data and our generated path. And since we will get the closer one uh, to the, the real data path, so we will save it and we look for another path that will exceed uh, that one. So, and also we estimated the volatility coefficient uh, by setting uh, sigma as follows. And uh, usually this uh, term is used for finance. So we try to use the same way in finance into epidemiology to get the volatility from the, the real data. As you can see uh, here, the, we have uh, fluctuation for the real data uh, uh, on the infected one, because we, we looked only for the, to get pre more precise uh, fitted data uh, to our model. We looked only to minimize the distance uh, with the infected uh, compartment. And we tried to see for the searchable and the recovered, but the problem is here we cannot use uh, uh, as an exact value for the, the vaccination strategy because it fluctuates also each day and it goes exponentially. So we tried to see the interval that uh, can be described by the volatility and three times the volatility for the real data and we got uh, a prediction for 20 days after uh, that wave. And by generating the sim same scenario, the same uh, uh, system multiple times, we got the uh, probability density function for the infected population of the stochastic. And in this case, it wasn't, th there wasn't any uh, quarantine. So, uh, after uh, we did the work on the treatment uh, strategy in uh, stochastic epidemic model with JUMP, firstly, I will give a slight definition for the Levy process. Uh, it's a stochastic process X is said to be a Levy process if satisfied the following properties. We have X0 equals to zero. The independence of increments for uh, that means for any xt2 minus xt1 and uh, so on are mutually independent. We have the stationary uh, stationary increments and also the continuity and probability to uh, fulfill uh, the conditions for a Levy process. Here uh, we define uh, following control general D dimensional uh, stochastic equation. We have uh, uh, here the the control in the drift part for the deterministic one. We have also the control uh, in a general way in the diffusion part and in jump uh, part. And we divide, uh, we describe the the end tilt as a compensated uh, random Poisson measure and and as a Poisson random measure. So. Uh, for the expected cost, functional is given as follows, and the value function is defined as V. So in a uh, more uh, general de definition for the optimal control, uh, we say that an admissible pair, uh, X star and U star on admissible control, U star is called optimal. If we have U star accomplishes the minimum of uh, G. So since in uh, stochastic uh, optimal control, we have the existence, but in the deterministic control, we have the uniqueness. We cannot obtain the uniqueness in the stochastic uh, sense. So as a definition for uh, near, near optimal control, we try to have that bound of error to define uh, the near optimal control. 
So a family of admissible controlled uh, X, Epsilon, and U Epsilon parameterized as Epsilon bigger than one, and any element of X, Epsilon, and U Epsilon, uh, or any element of U Epsilon is family is called near optimal control if we have the following condition uh, for modulo uh, G uh, minus V uh, uh, described as uh, this uh, equation are less than all uh, var epsilon and it holds for sufficiently small var epsilon where rho is a function of var epsilon satisfying the following uh, condition and we can call uh, u epsilon is a near uh, optimal control so for the uh, theoretical work that described the sufficient and necessary condition to obtain uh, stochastic optimal control for uh, an SDE with control in the drift part and in the diffusion part. It was uh, investigated by, by Zhu in this work. And here uh, we did work with uh, our collaborator, me and Bushra with our collaborators, Dries Bouga, Mohamed Fatini, Iman Hishami uh, from Morocco, on the uh, stochastic uh, radiotherapy treatment for a uh, random cancer model. Here, there is a model for the hedge cells and cancer cells. And by applying radiotherapy, the problem was that the same control will go directly for the cancer cells, it will go slightly to affect also the, the, the healthy cells. So here we uh, ensured the, the conditions for necessary and uh, sufficient uh, for the existence of optimal control. And we did some numerical simulation uh, to prove our theoretical work and uh, to see a scenario of doing a radiotherapy on a human body and what will gives you uh, as result. For a more general uh, aspect, by adding the jump diffusion uh, process into the work of uh, Zhu. So uh, Farid Shiroub and Brahim Zerdi got the, uh, using the excellent principle and multiple uh, uh, techniques to get the uh, conditions for the sufficient and necessary uh, cases. So in our work, uh, we tried to investigate a general model since there is Siri model is for searchable, uh, infected, recovered, and infected. That means there is a going back from uh, the recovered stage into the infected stage, uh, and it's uh, named as relapse. It can describe uh, diseases as uh, herpes, uh, tuberculosis. When the disease is latent in a human body, it will be in recovered stage, but when there is a weak immunity, it will go back and uh, will give, get a bigger viral load that will infect uh, another uh, individuals. Also, we try to formulate a more uh, general way for uh, reinfection by uh, the gamma uh, RI. That means every recovered individual uh, who will get in contact with with, with the infected uh, individual will go back into the infected stage. So for the, the deterministic uh, model, the ODEs are described as follows, and the parameters are beta is disease transmission rate, uh, mu is recruitment and natural death rate, Rho is the relapse rate, uh, gamma is the reinfection rate, and lambda is the recovery rate from uh, infectious disease. So by adding uh, uh, a jump into our model, 
we uh, did a jump on each uh, death rate in uh, each compartment and we got the following formulation. Firstly, uh, we ensured that we have an invariant domain for this uh, model. And uh, sorry, here the uh, the perturbation wasn't on mu, it was on beta and it was on uh, the reinfection uh, rate. That's why we have the same uh, term for S is an I and same term uh, of R in uh, I. So this is why we can get, by adding all those compartments, we get uh, less than one. Otherwise, if we did, the perturbation on uh, mu, we, we should show that there is a boundness to get the estimates for uh, the necessary and sufficient conditions. So here the assumptions for the, uh, the, the jump uh, process. And for the sufficient condition of near optimality, uh, we got those two lemmas, uh, and for the adjoint uh, equation systems also. After that, we got this term that described the sufficient condition for the near optimality and uh, H is the Hamiltonian. For the necessary condition of near optimality, we uh, did uh, prior estimates on the state of the, uh, the system and also for the adjoint uh, equations for the jump also. After that, we got the following theorem for the uh, necessary conditions uh, to describe the uh, near optimality. As a uh, numeric case, we did characterization uh, for a treatment strategy uh, in the model and we got the following uh, theorem where we character characterized the U that described the treatment as uh, follows. And for the simulation of the scenario, we can see that uh, having a treatment uh, control will, will reduce the infected size of the, the, the population even lower than the deterministic path. And we can see there is a jumps into uh, our model. It, it reduced also the jumps. Here, uh, the U, it was included in just in the deterministic uh, uh, or the, the drift of the SDE, because if we want to include the control into the uh, white noise or the jump part. The problem here is like you are saying that we are trying to control the environment, uh, such thing that cannot be controlled and doesn't have any biological meaning. So we, we uh, did just uh, a control only on the deterministic path that people can described as uh, interventions into the model. For uh, you, the treatment and the uh, effective uh, reproduction number, at first it was bigger than one and after that it stayed less than one for the uh, reproduction number. And at the beginning, it was gradual, and after that, in order to get a uh, reproduction number less than one, we should have a full capacity for the, the, the treatment to maintain the size of the, the infected population. Going to the within host model or the file dynamics, they can be described as this basic uh, model for the, the, the viral dynamics that describe T are the healthy cells, T uh, star is the infected cells, and V 
is uh, devices. There's other works that include another compartment for the uh, immune system or the antibodies, it depending on how you want to uh, make it more general and you can include in uh, each component uh, into uh, the model. So uh, lambda denotes the generation rate of HG cells. Here M is the natural uh, decay rate of cells. K is the transmission rate of cells. D is the decay rate of infected cells and P the virus uh, reproduction rate by infected cells and C is the uh, death rate of free virus. So we have uh, X here in a, a diagram from work of Wardas on importance of lytic and non lytic immune response. They added another compartment for the, uh, the immune uh, system. And they, as I said previously, for the lytic or non lytic, also they described it here uh, in uh, their model. And in this model, there is two basic reduction number one for the infection, and also there is one for the, uh, the, the immune uh, system. So uh, in their work, they try to see the stability for both senses when the basic reduction number is bigger than one. Uh, what goes for the immune system is if it's bigger or less than one and so on each they studied each cases i think for the work of Wong, uh, not uh, what as for deterministic case and for for the stochastic stability it was uh, uh, studied by pecha Maini and rajaji in 2017 for uh, they generated some uh, lyapunov function and calculated the distance between the pertur uh, perturbed uh, path with the deterministic pad and they got some conditions on the, uh, the volatility to have that fluctuation around the equilibrium point and for deterministic one. So in our work, uh, we tried to uh, include a drug therapy strategy into uh, stochastic viral model, uh, including uh, cellular immune response. So we tried to include a, a an option control in the model uh, studied by Wang and uh, Waltas. And uh, we did multiple simulation, I think on uh, if I'm an F HIV uh, case from the work of uh, Wang uh, and their, their pets and how to have that uh, uh, size of uh, healthy cells and uh, infected cells will maintain and not go to zero and be at a higher stage. So lately we try to couple the epidemic dynamics and the viral dynamics. The problem here is if we want to describe the viral one, it goes by rapidly as a faster scale maybe in hours, it can be described in minutes. For the epidemic dynamics, it can be described for days. That means there is a change in time scales between those uh, two type of models. So uh, from uh, work of uh, Professor Zilan Feig, uh, Velasco Hernandez, Tapia Santos on mathematical modeling for coupling within host and between host dynamics, in environmentally driven infectious disease. Uh, they added a, a function uh, GE that describes the rate at which an average host is infused by an outsider viral load. And they added another compartment as an intermediate scale between two, those two types of dynamics, namely the E. So it, uh, it describes the contaminated environment at time E and it will be between zero and one, such that we have the, the following uh, deterministic uh, 
okay in uh, our uh, study we investigate three different optimal control we include them in siqr model for uh, epidemic one and uh, we study it also with the contaminated uh, uh, compartment differential uh, equation into the model here we have since we have v as faster scale that means we can use the equilibrium point into the model and study it if we have like a, a stable uh, equilibrium uh, point into the viral model we can include them as a viral load that uh, can be in the environment the problem that can uh, be here is since we are talking about a general uh, population so it's like we are saying that each individual have the same uh, viral load but this can be extended maybe to a multi-group uh, epidemic model or multi-group uh, not epidemic model but multi-group viral model and or if we have homogeneous or closer that can we can take the mean of the the viral load from this kind of population but for, for example if we uh, study a case about uh, contamination from uh, school in uh, an exact uh, class uh, of children that can have the same age and maybe they can have uh, not so uh, not a lot of difference in uh, their uh, human body or, or immune response so it it can be extended for multi-group uh, case for the the viral dynamics so here we included uh, three uh, controls and i will go back to them after firstly uh, we proved the existence of a unique global solution for this kind of uh, system and uh, in stochastic case here we have the per uh, perturbation on beta the transmission rate so we have that uh, white noise on the uh, susceptible compartment and also for the infected compartment so minus sigma es and with the term uh, dw and also the plus for uh, for the same ter term in the infected uh, compartment we ensured by this term that we have existence of a unique solution and by including the three kind of uh, controls u1 it's related to contaminated environment control u2 is the non-pharmaceutical interventions uh, uh, u2 is the vaccination strategy let me this is why it goes from susceptible to the uh, recovered uh, compartment and for the treatment control, it goes from uh, the infected compartment into the recovered compartment. We formulated the following quadratic function. And we tried to find the solution for uh, the stochastic, uh, stochastic uh, epidemic model with control. Uh, we determined the performance uh, performance criterion uh, as this form and also we tried uh, means we tried to uh, define the value function the optimal control such as we have this uh, problem at the end uh, for the characterization for this uh, problem we got three uh, formulations for the u1 star u2 star and u3 star and we did uh, simulation using uh, this uh, values uh, into our uh, model so here for the term with control uh, with red we can see that there's lesser uh, size of uh, infected population uh, 
when we use the three uh, controls uh, at the same time. And for the simulation of the, the controls, U1 for the non-pharmaceutical intervention, it was bigger. And after that, it went uh, decreasing. And for the U2, it was going uh, uh, increasing, but uh, in a slower way. For the contaminated environment, it was declared as a U3. And for the simulation, even we are trying to uh, develop a way for diminishing the uh, uh, contaminated environment. At, in our simulation, it didn't work much to uh, decrease the, the, the E. It stayed with or without control, it stayed uh, the same. And we, we can, you can see it in our work. I didn't uh, show it up here, but it didn't have much impacts like cleaning the contaminated areas uh, won't have that, uh, this strategy won't have that impact as the treatment and non-pharmaceutical intervention or the, the vaccination of policy into uh, the model. At this is the end of my talk. I would like to thank uh, professor, my collaborators. Uh, firstly, Professor Bushra, my supervisor, Bruno Reliard, Mohamed Fatini from Morocco, and also this booker, uh, Ian Moyes, uh, and uh, Yeta, and Ariel. We worked also on uh, monkeypox, and there's some other one works on it. Uh, Joanna Romero, we are working on uh, some projects on. Uh, Zika uh, viruses and HIV, I would like to take them all. And thank you very much. Um, gladly take your uh, questions in this for this presentation. Thank you. So now you can uh, present your questions uh, through chat and we can read for you or you can unmute yourself and uh, ask the questions directly. There is one question from Mohammadi. Uh, uh, Khalifi, do you want to ask a question directly? Yeah, hello. Yes. Uh, so, uh, there is for this nice presentation. Uh, just uh, uh, wondering about the difference between E and I in the last model that you have just presented in your last work. That was my first question. But I okay. have also another question regarding the first part where you have okay. uh, uh, some Canadian data from uh, April to May 2021. I'm just wondering about the data regarding quarantines, because it looks like you have a red line where it looks like a steady line on zero. So that means that there is no available data on quarantine, so? Uh, there wasn't any quarantine or any time. Uh, That's I was, why uh, I didn't consider it. Okay, okay, because, yeah, I was uh, uh, thinking about considering, uh, I mean, infectives that are in, uh, in hospitals during that period, if they, if they are considered as, I mean, yeah, sort of, Quarantines or isolated? Yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, if we wanted to extend, because maybe it's better to make it more general for the data, because if you specify each uh, data as groups, uh, we can get uh, some, since we don't have the exact uh, data about the infected in the hospitalized case and no hospitalized case. So we try to make it more general to include all uh, the sites in one compartment. But, and for, for the first uh, uh, question, it was about the difference between E and, and I. But for I, it's the infected uh, population from uh, the SIR model. For E, it's described, it's an intermediate between the viral model 
and the epidemic model that described the area that was contaminated by an infected uh, individual. That means if uh, there is a high vi uh, viral load in an infected uh, individual, if he touched a surface, he will contaminate this environment. So it's like we are trying to see the density of this uh, infected, uh, th this viral load in uh, the environment and consider it as a way to uh, transmit the disease from an infected to uh, susceptible. Yeah, thank you. Other questions? Could we go back to your cost function? What are we trying to minimize? Uh, we try to minimize for the first case for the jumps, the treatment strategy. Mm -hmm. And the second one, we tried to include three different uh, controls, the, the vaccination, the treatment, and also if we are trying to include the, the cleaning of contaminated areas. So it was described by the, the last uh, U3. So we yeah. try to see if uh, we have the three uh, strategies at the same time, which one will be better. At, at the end, we saw that even when including the uh, cleaning the areas, uh, contaminated ones, it won't have that much impact as the other uh, strategies for the, the vaccination and the treatment. Right. So at the very beginning, you mentioned you really want to consider the social economic uh, impact when you talk about integrative approach. So you have not gone to that stage yet to really have the, the cost, uh, uh, cost and benefit. Yeah, for, for the cost and benefit, maybe by, by trying to have a path and minimizing, not, not have a fully, uh, uh, vaccination strategy, it will reduce the cost. And also we have, uh, I started uh, previously a work to see for the economic uh, impact of uh, disease and trying to have that sort of modernization that uh, when people lose their job or uh, be an, a temporary case for uh, sickness and leave the job, definitely on temporary and see the dynamics uh, and their impacts in uh, the economy as an employment model. And they, they use the same compartmental uh, uh, way to describe uh, the behavior in employment uh, for the SIR model. All right. Thank you. Other question, comments? The supervisor is here as well, so feel free. All right, thank you, Joshua. Uh, okay, if not questions, then I would like to again thank you for, for the interesting